Good morning. It's almost the end of uh, this, of November 2021, and I'm here at the Jordan Valley. The Dead Sea is that way. You cannot see it from here, but it's so close to us. But I came for Mesada. I've been asked so many times, when are you going to take a new video of Misada? And I said, the minute I will have money, I will do that. Because this is the end of the world, and that's the reason King Herod was here. And that's the reason the Jews took that place later on. Then, here it is. Where it is? Look for, it looks like a mountain that was curved out of the big line of mountains. And this is Masada, right there, with the plateau on it. Can you see it? And we're gonna climb it now. We're gonna visit the city that King Herod built. We will talk about it there. And we will see, we will visit the city that, or the fortress that the Jews later on, 70 years after King Herod time, used against the Romans. Then two different stories. There's no connection between it, except of the idea that it was at Misada, at the end of the world. Then see on top of Misada. I just reached the top of Misada. With the cable car, of course. You know me. I like to walk. I don't like to climb up. Especially when you have a um, cable car. But from here you can see a lot of things. First of all, a little bit of the Dead Sea. Here and there, which is the lowest place in the world. It's around 400 meter below sea level, 12, uh, 1200 feet below sea level. Amazing, amazing. Um, but here, what you can see from here is then evidence for the siege of the Romans against the Jews who've been here after the destruction of the temple. 73, 74, 80. Then you can see the biggest, the biggest uh, camp there, that according to what we know, it used to be a camp, an army camp, and um, kind of a pharmacy or hospital. There's another one, a small one there. I'm trying to find my finger, here it is. And you can see one more there. Altogether, there are eight army camps. Another thing that it's important to understand that the minute they reached here, they started to build a siege wall see the line of stones that goes all the way around Masada. The idea is to tell the Jews here, that's it. You cannot run away and no one can actually come and help you. Uh, the army camps are usually um, squares and because no one used that place after that, then um, we found it like just like that. The only thing that they, they took when they finished the battle here, um, they took the um, tents that they had and went away. We will see more of those army camps, but we are entering through now the main entrance, Snake Path, the main entrance to Mesada. And what you see here is a wall that King Herod built. Why King Herod visit that place? We will talk about it soon. Why choose that place? We will talk about it soon. Now the snake path looks like a snake path, but it's not in a, it's not an Israeli name. I mean, it's not that we decided to call it the snake path. Before we will enter, you can see the guard entrance, one of the gates. And to get to enter to Masada, it's not obvious. I mean, they won't let you enter freely just because you're nice. I mean, I'm talking about King Herod. Then you can see the plaster here. Uh, it looks like marble, but it's not. And the soldiers used to sleep there in that room, and only then you could enter to Masada. Now, what is that ugly black line? That is the old way of excavation to tell you what is new and what is not. Beneath it, that's how we found it. Above it, it's renovations, but 
renovations according to the stones that have been here. Most, if not all of the stones were um, curved here at Mesada. Then let's climb up um, Snake Path. The story that we are going to talk about is there's, we have only one main source, and that is Josephus Plavius, Josef ben Matitiao, Plavius Josephus, some people say it, and he actually wrote a book about the war between the Jews and the Romans at around 66, 74, and he mentioned that war. Now, he had lots of documents that he could use, but the document were at Rome, and he was a Jew that started his mission against those Romans. What's actually happened here? He was the commander of um, the Galilee area. He was catch by uh, the Romans, and before they killed him, he said to one of the um, one of the men there, "You, Vespasianus, you are going to be the next Caesar." Just for fun, they kept him in prison, and guess what? He became to be the next Caesar. Then, he uh, was saved, he became a Roman citizen, and his mission was to write the book, a book about, books actually, about the life in Israel, about Judaism, about the history of Judaism. Then he then, that matter, um, we know the story because of him maybe because of documents that the Roman left us and um, or mainly because of it but you must understand that the story was in his eyes as a Jew but he wrote it for the Romans then we always ask ourselves question marks now this is the model of Misada and the first thing that I remember um, is well now we can see it is that my father took me all the way up through the snake path and when I entered to Masada I said for that there's nothing here it's boring what am I gonna do here why and then he said King Herod was crazy but he wasn't S word now it's in video I don't know who's watching it he knew what he's doing. He actually reached Misada because he ran away from the Maccabees, from the Hashman family, uh, and um, their allies, the Persian uh, partim, parties. And he was loyal to the Romans. Then he ran away from Jerusalem in the middle of the night. He had a huge fight at the place they called Herodion, another fortress that he built for himself. And he left his family, around 800 people here at Messara, and went to Rome. He was crowned as a king. And, um, and then he came to uh, conquer Israel back by the name of the Romans. Then in that matter, his family was here. The only problem is that even now it's hot. It's like 85 degrees. It's the end of uh, November. It's quite hot. And um, yeah, I know that you are. Yeah, I know. I know in Europe and some of, some of Canada, in Canada and a lot of places in America, it's freezing now. I know, but this is Israel. This is the Holy Land. Then this is the time to visit Israel. I mean, just before Christmas, I mean, to enjoy Christmas, to enjoy the weather, to enjoy Hanukkah, I mean, it's a win-win situation. Then in that case, he chose that place because it was the end of the world. And I actually woke up at 4 a.m. at Tel Aviv to reach Misada at 8.30. Then you can understand how difficult it is. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't visit that place before. I, last time that I've been here was a week before coronavirus. Um, I call it siege because we have a siege wall here, here as well. Then, um, and thank you because you're supporting me uh, by, um, if any of you want to do that, go to the inscription and 
by the link of buy me coffee you can do that and this is the reason i could rent a, a car to reach that area because you cannot do that by by bus then most of it it's empty but king herod was here alone when he came to here he heard that his family almost surrendered to the Maccabees because of lack of water. Mm. But it just at the last minute, before they decided to give up, it started to rain and it filled their water system a little bit. They survived. That King Herod built that fortress not because he needed it. Um, it's difficult now to see the mountains of Moab, but the emptiness there is Jordan of today and that was the highway this is not a highway um, that's why only King Herod used it and then the, 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 the zealots the Jews who came to you 70 years later they actually wanted to find a place without enemies without uh, without the idea that someone will come for them then he decided to build a fortress for himself to memorize the trauma he almost lost his family, but because of a miracle of the water, they were saved. Then this is the only fortress that I know that he built from day one until today. Until the day, until the last day. And what we can see here, that is our Greek culture area. That gray place was full with, um, um, let's see, date trees, goats, um, I will, I will even say wheat. Then it's so good, but you need water and there's no water. We will solve that problem later on because we have to remember that it was green. The area that he actually started with is only the northern part. The northern part, mainly because the south part is the sunny side and it's always sunny. Then in that case, he built walls around it and you can see it looks like a double wall because he used the walls as a storerooms as places for the soldiers and then he built himself lots of storerooms 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 some i might kill myself some i might kill me i must protect myself some i might kill me i must protect myself those are storerooms for himself for the soldier they have a different place to feed themselves and then a roman bath there's no water it's no wood and still there's more than one there's two Roman baths at least two maybe even three and then look at that he built himself three palaces one two three on the cliff there's a gap between the upper one to the lower one of 12 stories building crazy or amazing the idea is to uh, to make their their amazing enemies, uh, sorry, amazing friends, which are talking about few, mainly mainly the uh, Roman soldiers or Roman emperor who might come to here. He wants to impress them, to show them that he is, he knows what he is doing. Then now we know everything. Are we going to climb? Yes, we are going to climb it. Now let's do that. What's that? That's the Western Palace. Um, it might be that it was built by the Hashmonite family, the Maccabees family, uh, before, because it looks like it, but, but he renovated it. What for? Next to it, there's another gate, which is, if you ask me, was the main gate, because to reach the Dead Sea, and to reach Masada was so difficult. You have to use a boat, which is difficult to use because of the salty water. Then most of the people came from the desert, from the Judean desert. We will be there then later on. We do have time. Then let's climb. We are climbing to the Acropolis, to the place that he was there, but mostly by himself because he killed most of his friends. Someone, I must protect myself. Someone, someone might kill me. You can see part of the double walls. Um, and there are rooms until now. It's a storeroom of 
uh, of uh, the people who works here. <coughs> You're gonna be surprised. There are so many, so many things to see here. And in a way, we are more or less at the sea level. Remember, 400 meters below sea level is the Dead Sea. Actually, more than that. Okay. All right, then we reached the quarry. Quarry? Yeah. Think about it. You have to build it. Then it's better to build it with the stones from here. If not, you have to climb up. The cable car was from this time. But the quarry was used for another reason. It's kind of a moat. No one can enter to his palace. And when he used it, he used it only in wintertime, just like me, because it's terribly hot on summertime. When I'm taking groups here, I wish that I will, in summertime, it's actually reach 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 45, even close to 50 degrees uh, Celsius. Not an easy. Now, before we are entering to his main place, let's enter to the commander's residence. I'm not sure that he is the one that King Herod visited. If King Herod wanted him to come, uh, to meet him, he actually came to him. Then let's enter um, to his kind of a villa, and it's a typical Roman villa. The sun is in our eyes, so I'm trying to find some better space, better place. It looks like that. A little bit sunny, a lot of shade, and there are two rooms here, but are behind us there are many, many more rooms. Why it's important for me? Let's go in, and you will sit. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Colors from 2,000 years ago. Now, it's not an important building. The commander can accept a very simple room. You know what? Two rooms, but without colors. Then everything was covered with plaster, even the non-important rooms, and fresco, padding on it. Let's go to the room with, with a view. Da -da -da -da. The colors is mostly from Italy, from Pompeii. Uh, the artist from Pompeii as well. Look how beautiful is the view, isn't it? And look at that, you can see one of the army camps and the siege wall. You will see it from everywhere. Then it shows you that it was beautiful. Then remember, agriculture area was green, and at it, um, colors. Now what's that? In the winter time, it's quite cold at night time. Then this is kind of an oven to warm yourself in this cold house, built by the Jews who've been here. Um, 70 years after um, the death of, uh, of King Harold. Remember that two different stories, I wanted to remember it. Another thing that it's important to understand that in some of these fortresses, and the, main, and the name is Sara, is actually a fortress. And some of them, you could find some figures. Here, though he built it for himself, he built it in a Jewish strict way. And this is the next question. He was a Jew. Then he was half an Abadin, half an Edomite, half a Jew, Ah, there's more than uh, yeah. He was everything. I mean, he was born as a Jew uh, to an Abadian woman that converted herself. And his father, his grandfather, converted himself uh, to Judaism. Then, in that case, he was a Jew. Then he kept that place strictly in a Jewish way. We didn't find any figures here. Uh, ma why? I think because God saved his family here. 
beautiful, isn't it? The good thing in that video is that now I can actually do whatever I want. Usually when I'm with a group here, I do have something like one and a half hour with private people two hours, but it all depends on how hot it is. Now, I have no limits. I already pay for my car. It will really cost me the same if I will be here for two and a half hours or 20 minutes. Another stove is here. That is mostly for baking things. Outside, it's not inside their room. Then in that case, it's better for everyone. You know, smoke and those kind of things. Only now we are entering to the main entrance square. Only few people enter to here. Only us. He didn't accept anyone. He was afraid from anyone, from everyone. Then in that case, uh, when he came to here, uh, when he wasn't here, only a few soldiers could be here to clean his place. And when he came to Masada, if he came, because some people say that he never been here, I'm, I'm, I, I don't believe in it. Then I'm sure, more, I'm sure that more soldiers came to here. The cook was here because he knew how to live. He had fish sauce from Spain. He had here, we found it here. We found here amazing um, uh, wine from Italy, fish from the Nile. Then in that case, um, you're not bringing uh, food to here if you know that you're not going to be here. Then what you can see here, the three palaces, but we are standing right here. That's the commander residence. We are here watching that yard and see that man that is taking picture now? He is standing right here. This is in the way the reception of um, of the of Masada. There you will find um, uh, colors, but you know, at the reception of any hotel, uh, usually it's one of the most beautiful places here. But look at that: one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen storerooms, my friends. Sixty storerooms for himself. Another thing that you can see here that in the walls you could find some towers that were surrounded in that place. And still, even without it, it's so steep, it's very difficult to uh, conquer. Um, we're going to visit one of two um, storerooms to see um, products that he prepared himself. Um, I mean, dry products, a storeroom, and and uh, liquid product, it's like a different storeroom. Um, you can see the Roman bath that we're gonna visit, and then we're gonna visit the upper palace. But you can see that there is a wall here. There are four people there now, yeah. You see two at least two of them, and now two is stepping down. You can see the wall. The idea is to protect him from his soldiers. When he actually walked there, they couldn't see him. Crazy? Yes. But I must say that um, crazy, crazy, but he was a genius as well. Then, are we ready to go through the storerooms? Because from here it looks like, oh, oh, not so big. Oh, of course, yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Let's go to the reception. Do you want a room with a view? A towel for the pool? And he had two pools here. I'm not kidding. One of them is Olympic uh, uh, um, pool. And the other side, mainly for the soldiers. Then you can see the colors here as well. The same pattern, same colors, same artist.
Where are the tourists? I'm asking the same question. And now we heard about a new virus at South Africa. Oh, South, yeah, South Africa, not only country, a few countries that maybe be, can be resist uh, the, uh, the vaccine. Then they closed those, the border for those countries, which tells me that less tourists will come. I, um, that's why I actually decided to help you, to help myself, actually, to help myself. And you, most of you cannot reach Israel. Uh, most of you, uh, some of you are a little bit too old for that, um, too hot for you. And here it is. I'm your uh, tour guide. Did you subscribe my channel? Yes? Great. If not, please do that. And you will have, um, I have more than 19,000 videos. Yes, 19K videos. This is one storeroom, one of 16. You can see the plaster here. And it was as narrow as that because it was covered with wood. Wood. There's no, you didn't see even one tree here. But if there's, if there are, water source then you can do it i didn't talk about it yet let me let's wait with it then you can see that some of the storerooms um he, we didn't excavate it we're waiting to have more tools and we are living a little bit for uh the future but mainly if you ask you asking me why they didn't renovate the rest money we need money for that uh, lots of money. It's not easy to renovate uh, places. Let's us go to see some other storerooms. And it's so fun. Uh, it's so nice now. Because I'm usually going through the... Um, through only two storerooms. But now I can show you a little bit more of it. For one person, yes. For one person. He had salt, he had nuts, he had dates. And we found we found one of the dates. Um and we do have a tree from his time, it's called Metushelach. But the only problem is that it's a male tree. And who needs male if we want to have dates we need a female one then let me show you that tree I do have a picture of it amazing for one person and uh, you didn't see yet um, a storeroom for uh, for liquid products let me take the picture out if we are looking at the pictures, then here you can see Masada at night and full moon. It's not by picture, it's National Geographic, but it's amazing, isn't it? And the other side is the sunrise at Masada. I must tell you something. To climb up to here to see the sunrise is beautiful, but to to take yourself a five-star uh, hotel room and wake up before sunrise in an air-conditioned room, and then to see the sunrise and go to sleep, it's better. And another thing that we find here, dates, nuts, walnuts, pomegranate, and salt. And say hello to Metushela, uh, one of the trees that we found the seeds of the dates here. We have to look for the ladies, we are trying to do that. Then maybe in about a few years we will be able to eat the same dates that King Herod said, uh, ate because he said that these, those dates from here are the best dates ever. And he is right. He was right. We came from here and we will continue through that storeroom. Everything was covered with, with uh, uh, wood. Uh, roof, we already know it, but the Jews, after the time of uh, of uh, King Herod, story B, another story, not connection to King Herod, use it to build a wall, a wooden wall against uh, 
uh, Romans and we will talk about it. We will read that, but please remember it. Here it is. A storeroom for liquid products. First of all, it was covered with plaster, which actually uh, all the uh, all the storerooms were like that. Uh, but it's got kind of, an, kind of an angle that if a vase full of wine will break, wine from South uh, um, Italy, we know the winery, we know the year, and it was uh, for King Herod. If one of the vases will break, the servant who broke it will die, but the wine will save because all the wine will go in those three holes. They will be able to collect it, collect it, and then it's going to be the Terra Santa uh, Italian wine. This is the um, this is the Roman bath, but we will enter it. But first, let's continue through another storerooms to the to his palace. And if someone wants to attack him, you have to go through all those narrow um, storerooms. Another, it's kind of another a moat in a way, another way to stop the enemies. You can see here the northern palace entrance stay away this is original this is not you can see the difference and we enter into the northern palace which you already know that it's like three different palaces that was built on the cliff show off show off show off Hmm. A wonderful view of the palace, of the storerooms from here. And you can see a little bit of the Dead Sea. <coughs> the Dead Sea is now dying. Um, we're losing one and a half meter. Let's say four feet every year. And you can see the uh, Roman bath, another tower that survived. Beautiful, isn't it? I'm almost alone here. This is the northern part of the Dead Sea. It's difficult to see because it's a little bit, uh, it's not foggy, it's dusty. There are days that you can reach here and you can see every house in Jordan. This is the northern palace. It's not big. You must understand that he didn't live here for years. He was here for like two, two weeks, three weeks a month, uh, a year. Where we are, right here. I believe that you're gonna see soon the room of King Herod. This is a replica of Augustus Caesar, the Caesar from his time, and we know that Augustus actually stayed in that room. Uh, bed his bedroom was here, but look at the beautiful balcony. The stairs to go all the way down to another pavilion around palace, mainly for business. Uh, the one we'll enter here where will be only the important people, but important people is one thing, and business is second thing. If you won't sign the contrast, I believe that you will go all the way, all the way is down, baby. Um, there were shelves here, and some people actually thought about library. I must tell you, we are talking about 
wine and food. Why? Because there's no reason to read here. If you want to read, you can read in your room. And the visitors, the important visitors, actually slept down there, far away from his room. Someone might kill me, I must protect myself. They had their own um, Roman bath. Remember the one that he saw? It was only for himself. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rooms, but now we are entering to his room. Yes, I know, I know. You will tell me immediately, oh, it's such a small place. You're right, but um, it, it doesn't need a closet. I mean, there are servants for that. Then his room is actually divided into two. The entrance and his bedroom is, let's say, a table, uh, a bed, and I'm sure that you can actually have here a nice window as well. But look at the mosaic floor. It's boring. It's really boring. Why? He's King Herod. He knows how to deal with mosaics floor. He loves colors. But this is totally Jewish strict mosaic. No figures. You shall have you shall have no figures, no statues. Here it is. Remember, God saved him from the enemies. Save this family. Mm. All right, let's go to the balcony. And we already know why he built it at the northern part and not at the southern part. At the northern part, always sunny. Can you see the shade? Northern part. There's so many things to see here. Let's start with the three um, palaces. Here we are at the upper one, the middle one, the round one. It's so strange to be here alone. And the lower one is for the visitors. 11 stories building. It's difficult to see it from here because it just looks like, yeah, all right, two minutes and, and I'm there. But it's totally not. It's actually really, really, really difficult to climb up. Another, no, it's not the best view day, but something like 10 miles from here, you're supposed to see a green area. This is a national reserve of En Gedi, and there's a lot of fresh water there. Lots of fresh water there. When the Romans came to here to, to, make, to build a siege wall, All around, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can see the, you can see down. There's um, army camp, and you can see the siege wall, and you can understand that there are soldiers who actually goes from one place to another. And if someone is not reaching uh, his um, camp in less than 15 minutes, they know that something happened to him, and then all the soldiers will be there. I'm not sure that someone succeeded. Um, to um, enter to this place. The, uh, I mean, to cross those walls, it's like three meters wall, nine feet wall, and a lot of towers on the way, and, and eight army camps. Not easy to, to escape from here. Uh, then the Romans had to go all the way to Engedi, 10 miles, 16, 17 kilometers from here, to get fresh water. While the Jews here, remember the second story, not King Herod's story, 70 years after King Herod, could enjoy lots of water and lots of um, food. We talked about the storerooms, but let me tell you that um, some of the products weren't kosher. For example, example the wine wasn't kosher, um, the fish sauce wasn't kosher, um, then in that case, when the zealots, when the Jews came, they came to here later on, they had double kosher food. Really, really double kosher that some of us believe that some of the priests uh, actually found themselves here. Because they had to eat special food that was blessed in the Jewish temple. Oh, I don't know, can you see the birds? Oh, 
Oh, now they are in the lower part. Those are tree stumps. We will find them uh, soon, as I believe. It's a special, uh, a special bird that you can find here. And look at that. The second biggest army camp is here. And the Silva, the commander of, of, uh, of, of uh, the Roman commander of uh, uh, the um, army camp here, and we are talking about a league, the 10th league. It's, it's something like 12,000 people and a lot of uh, uh, slaves. He was there. Then I believe that they came from the desert. Remember, it's so difficult to reach Misada from the sea. Now it's not a problem. There's a road now, and we are losing the sea. Then, then, um, then in that case, it's easier. And I reached that place from there. The first picture that, or the first uh, uh, video that I took, the beginning of it was from uh, from that side. Then, in that matter, um, did you just enjoy water here? And the, Zero, I mean the, the Romans had to go all the way to Engedi and to even to Jericho, which is, uh, let's say, it took me 40 minutes from Jericho to here. Then, yeah, not so easy. Then how, how did you deal with the water and actually how King Herod deal with the water? We will talk it soon. Don't worry. We will talk about it. Um... Another thing that it's very important for me to tell you, a year before the destruction, of years before the destruction, at um, Passover Eve, Easter Eve for the Christians, um, some of the Jews from here went to Engedi and killed 700 people there. Jews killed Jews there. Um, it's The main reason is, is that the Jews there had a special orchard of a fossimon that was one of the most important um, plants to create the Chanel 5 of ancient time. That part was owned by the Romans and even Cleopatra used it. Even the Dead Sea wasn't part of, of King Herod because they used all the minerals. The Romans used it, not King Herod. Then in that case, the Jews went there, killed 700 people, including children and women, and came with those plants. It was kind of a diamond at that time. And one of the re reasons, the Romans went all the way to Miss, from Jerusalem to here, and it took them, let's say, the, the Jewish uh, temple been destroyed, 70 AD. Then it took them four years, three between three or four years, to come to here, to come here with lots of soldiers. And here, we had a little bit less than 1,000 people um, to conquer that place. One of the reasons, we must show it to the. Um, we must show it to the uh, world that we are actually dealing with every one who are against us. But we believe now that the main reason that they reach here was for the Afasamon as well, for the plants, for the secret, at the synagogue of Engedi. Um, there's a beautiful mosaic floor, beautiful, not so beautiful, but there's a list of things not to do. One of them is, I said, uh, if you will tell the secret of, of the Afasamon to someone else, God will punish you and your family. Then in that case, that was a mystic. And, and, and the Afasamon, although we wanted to believe that was part of their uh, income, which was true, it wasn't, they didn't own it. The royal family on it, the Romans, then they just worked for them. Just like King Herod wasn't the real king, he was the puppet king. And the word King Rex wasn't the best Roman word, because the first Romans that had been uh, in Rome and created Rome were kings, but they were awful kings. And then the Republic became to be. Uh, the uh, continuation of Rome. No more tyrants. Now it's only Caesars. That, let's face it, became uh, became to be tyrant and even gods. Then the word Rex, hmm. lower, 
Rex Horror Herald. We're entering to the big uh, Roman bath, the large bath house, and it's already 43 minutes. If you're still with me, write it for me. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna upload that video as it is, as one long uh, video. And later on, if you will ask me, I will cut it into special videos. Then you will have a little, the bathhouse video, the palaces video, whatever, something like that. Then just tell me that. A Roman bath wasn't just for fun. It was for more fun. Uh, people came to here not only to take a bath. People came to here to uh, gossip, some exercise, and then to use the aroma bath while you are talking and drinking wine and resting. Then it was more than that. Then that yard was only the entrance of it. And let's continue with it. Remember the black line? What is beneath it? That's how it used to be. What is above it? Renovation, but with the same stones here. Uh, Misada was never destroyed uh, by an enemy. From time to time, the earth is shaking here. Then that is the result. And you know, 2,000 years. Um, do a lot. Hey, you can see me. Hello, me. Hello, you. When you are entering to a Roman bath, you must be clean. You cannot be stinky. Rome bath, Rome bath is not really for uh, cleaning your body. You have to be clean before that. Then usually there's a pool here, but this is a special pool. This is a mikveh, a Jewish ritual bath built by King Herod. Then it shows you that here he saw himself as 100% Jew except of the non-kosher food. Jews are purifying themselves a lot, not their body, not their soul. To purify the soul, their soul, their soul they are praying and, uh, and talking, asking forgiveness. Same pattern of uh, the um, uh, mosaic floor. And look at that, sewage canal, because it's involved with a lot of water and a lot of uh, steam. And we don't have water here. It's a desert. Then in that matter, um, now you're entering into the room, and there's a locker room. Look like every room. You can see the colors all around it. And you can see the pattern of the floor, the tiles. And guess what? Opposite this is something that he loved. It's actually imitated a uh, Roman floor as well. You, can, you could find it in, some, in, in, in the Jewish temple, for example. And here you can find it too. The bunches that you see here are not from his time. You can see that it was made with a, with a little bit of cement and uh, clay and some of the um, columns that they found here. The Jews use it as a mikveh, a big mikveh, and before that, they built here another pool, but that's to clean um, the feet of their, that they won't be stinky. I, I looked at it and said, oh, it's mainly for the children. That's as a child. Remember, I was here for the first time when I was five years old. They didn't care about um, the colors. They cared about surviving. And you can see that we found here a lot. See the black line. Mm, let me take a picture of it for you. Uh, the pictures will go. Uh, I will uh, upload it to YouTube, uh, sorry, to Facebook and to Instagram. Both links are in my description almost of every video, and especially that video. But if you won't find it and you want it, just write me and um, a message and I will send it to you. This is the, kind of the midway to the cold pool.
you know, after 10 minutes in the hot room, you're jumping into here and then you can hear the pss of your body. But this is another mikveh that was built by King Herod, mainly for himself. Uh, and it is as a pool, a uh, cold pool. And now a mikveh needs water, running water, um, not running water, water from, the, from rain. Um, and the roof is actually collecting the water, and some of them entering through here, it's called the treasure, and touching the water itself, and then the water became pure. King Aaron did it. Yeah, now you can ask me again, is it you or not? You know the answer. It was everything. But here it was a Jew. And this is the hot tub. The main room, the most important one. You can see the hypocaust. Some of clay columns. Not so high. It actually will divide us from um, the floor that we are now uh, walking on. That wall, the floor, it looks actually like that. And let me go backward because the best picture is backward, but you have to be careful because the uh, exit is not so big, not so high. And just a moment, see that? There's another shape like that in my head. Then when you are climbing up backward, I'm begging you to be careful. And let me take a picture of that room before someone will enter, although, as you saw, there's not a lot of someone's here. Then, hot hair, enter through the gap of the floor and through the gap of, of the walls. Even the walls have like two layers. And if you look at that, it's a replica made by the Italians. Uh, for us, looks like that, and hot hair enter through the oven, which needs a lot of water and lots of wood, and that's it. This is a hot tub. Um, one more thing, to enter to the hot tub at that time, um, you have to wear shoes, mainly wooden shoes, if not it's too hot. If you wanted to steam the room, then a little bit of water on the floor will steam it. And uh, we believe that he had kind of a pool um, bath here that he could actually enjoy himself. Remember, it's himself for himself. Now, what will happen if a drop of water will enter, will fall on the head of King Herod? I think you know what will happen. The one, um, the um, servant that will be next to him will die. And to avoid it, they build that kind of um, ceiling. Then the water will go all the way straight to the gap between the walls and straight outside. Here, it will be dry. Nice, isn't it? This is one of the most beautiful uh, Roman baths that I found in the world. And I love to travel at Europe to look uh, the travel at Roman places in Europe. It's not the biggest one, but it's actually almost saved like that. You can you can feel it. You can feel it. Are we going out from the from there? Yeah, it's not the end of the storeroom, and we already wow, almost one hour. Is it too much? Please say no. Please say no. I could be here for hours, I won't do that. It's uh, Friday and because um, you honor me by supporting me and I rented a car, uh, I will want to go to two more places that I wish that I will be able to do that than to show you more of it. The servants were here, the oven were there. Look at the beautiful stones that they use and like in the secondary use. Um, amazing. That is secondary use. I mean, they, they use it as, as, as a mikveh and, and a Roman bath, as well as uh, the juice, but uh, uh, someone has to keep it like that. And we're talking about uh, lots of wood. Can you see trees here? Can you see wooden roof? No. No, you cannot. Oh, here it is. But this is more than one.
Let's continue. Some storerooms that they didn't excavate yet. A lot of mystery there. I want to be like a mice that can enter through the holes to find so many things that we didn't, we don't know yet. Then we are going to the discovery of the location of the lots. Hmm, lottery, lottery. But this is a different kind of lottery. I'm taking you now back to the second story. King Herod is already dead, natural death. And now 70 years pass. And um, the Romans are entering tomorrow to the city, to the fortress. I don't, I'm not sure if I mention it. Fortress is another word to Mesada. Or oh, Mesada is another word to fortress. And we believe that it was just like that. I mean, their roof was just like that. In that room, something very important happened. Then first of all, we find here um, some um, ostracons, some clay with names on it of men. I can read you of Giora, uh, Malchi, Huno. Uh, one of them is even the um, the head commander who decided what to do with our with those clay. Um, we already know that it's uh, actually a name Ben Yair. That is Elazar Ben Yair. That was the the, the one who controlled everything. But let's sit a little bit in that important room. I'm not going in now to the story if um, the Jews that were here were innocent or not. Um, um, Josephus wrote us that they weren't. Some of them, um, and we already know so we, the story of Engeli, uh, used to kill someone who they believed that didn't serve himself as a real Jew. Um, there's in every community, and this is one of them. And don't forget the Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger is in front of you. Then it's the last day. The Romans already destroy the wall and I will show you exactly where it's happened the Romans will enter tomorrow morning to here in that place there are lots of women lots of children lots of girls lots of old people and few soldiers now the soldiers they will kill immediately obvious isn't it? I'm just taking the water out, then let me first drink, if it's okay by you, and then we will continue. Then, the men, the soldiers, they will kill. The women and the children is another story. We are talking about a thousand of soldiers without any women in their life for years. Now, the Jewish ladies, they don't speak Latin. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers, they don't speak Hebrew. They will give a coin that they bought from the lady of the house to the man, to the ladies, and even to the children. And uh, they have numbers. The other side of the coin, the man, the, the, the ch children and the <clears throat> women will understand what those soldiers want from them. Now, if there are children here, under the age of 13, please skip that part. Waiting for you to skip the part, pause, let them go, let them, go, let them ask, ask them to bring some uh, drinks or snacks or something else to you. Ready? Okay. Look at those coins. It's not the end. Oh, you can see my finger. Do you want your woman 
to be part of it. You want the children to be part of it. The minute, the minute they will do that, they will lose their life. They might be alive, but they won't be alive. They will be dead in spirit. Think about 800 Nigerian girls, Christians, that were kidnapped by the local ISIS. And a few years ago, we found them with burqa and holding children. I'm talking uh, their babies. I'm talking about children under age of, or at the age of 11, girls, holding babies. Is that what you want for your, for your children? Then they decided to end that story, and soon we will enter to the synagogue that that's where we believe that it's happened. Now, we don't know the truth, because the one who wrote it was um, 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 Josephus Plavis. He wasn't here at all. He'd never been inside the, the Messiah. Then the speech of Yair, we saw the, his name on the astrocon on the small clay, and the lot uh, is there. Uh, I mean, um, he, he didn't hear that speech, but he can imagine what's happened to him, or maybe the few women and children that, that found alive, maybe they, they told the, stick, the story. I don't know what's true and what no, but it's a very dramatic story. What actually happened is that after the speech of Yahir, Everyone went, uh, I'm talking only, only about the man there, and the men went to their houses and slaughtered the families, their children, their women. Okay, I can do it to one of my neighbors, but to my, my mother. And then they came to here. <sighs> Ten or eleven men were chosen to kill all the rest. Every man who wasn't chosen went to his house, slept next to his family, and when the one of the ten, one of the eleven, entered to the room, he was smiling to him, and he killed him. Those ten men came to hear and one of them had to kill the rest and then to commit a suicide. To commit a suicide is not allowed in uh, Judaism. Then in a way, only one committed a suicide. The rest were killed. And because we found that poachers here we believe that it might be the place that they deal with it. Why? Not only because of it, because that was the headquarter of um, of um, uh, Misada. Can we continue now? Let's do that. Children, you can come back. We are leaving that area. I'm not going all the way down to the two other uh, um, palaces. Remember, the run one and the low one, although it's beautiful. Uh, mainly because I'm afraid that they, they will close their place on me. But it's uh, something like uh, 10 minutes walking down and for me, to 20 minutes climbing up. You can do that from here. This is not the original entrance. The original entrance was from the palaces itself, but... Um, uh, it's been destroyed and we have to build something new. That's the entrance, the western entrance, and we believe that that building was in a way the headquarter of, uh, of uh, the place. And um, we found a lot of poachers here. Then it looked like um, it's very important. Oh, wow. Usually you can refill water here, then you cannot. And for me it was important because you can, when you see the water, the spare of the water goes to here, and then here it is, you can see some green plants. Then it means that there are. Uh, if there's water, there's no problem. And you can see some of 
the clays that we found here. I'm not talking about the zealots. They've been here. This is their where uh, it's their water. And next to it is Watergate. Oh, America! We do have Watergate too. It actually tells us that there is um, there's a connection to Watergate here and to the water supply man. But still, we have to wait. But from here, you can see a beautiful picture of the upper to upper palace. We've been there. You can see the um, balcony. And you can see the round, um, the round middle palace and the lower one. If you will enter, if you go straight, although it, now it's closed, you will be able to reach another mikveh. This mikveh was built by the Jews who've been here. And the restrooms now, it looks like you cannot use the restrooms now. The guard room was here, and when we um, deal with it, excavated it, and cure it a little bit, we found a lot of graffitis, which is not now, I mean, you cannot see it from here. One of them was of a beautiful uh, yard with um, palm trees, date trees, and in that case, um, sadly it's not here, and a boat, even a boat. And my friends, you can see a few things. The synagogue that wasn't built by King Herod, built by the Jews who've been here, and a water system. system. And look how big it is. Look how big it is. Um, I must tell you that the, when King Herod wasn't here, the unit that deal with the water was here and deal with it almost 24 hours. They fill the water system, and we have a lot of water systems here, and a lot of a lot of one, a lot of water system in the hidden place that you will see soon. Look how big it is! You can imagine that water wasn't one of the problems when the Jews decided to surrender in a way, in a special way, a very sad way, and uh, uh, started uh, decided to kill themselves. Um, huge, isn't it? They um, decided to keep the storerooms full of, of, of uh, food, and they didn't destroy the water supply man. To show the... Um, Romans, they didn't kill themselves because of lack of water and lack of food. And here, we find another mikveh. It is special mikveh because it's the first one from the second um, temple time, first mikveh that we found in Israel. Now, we have more than, we found more than 900, almost 1,000 uh, mikvehs from uh, time. And I remember that when Ike Eliadin, the excavator, uh, found it, he asked for the um, rabbis to come to here, to measure it, and then they started to shout, it's kosher, it's kosher, it's kosher, then it's kosher, it's a mikveh. Mikveh is supposed to be and a certain, uh, I mean, I mean, amount of water, and the uh, mikveh, for, it's for the men and for the women. The men is doing it until today, at least once uh, a week before Shabbat. A woman is doing it once in, uh, let's say, three months. Uh, no, once in a month, you know, a week after she's getting the hair period. Look how amazing it is. You can see the, now you can see the 11, 12 stories building. The upper palace, the middle one and the lower one. And you can see immediately that it's shaded. 
the shade there, it's cool on the shade. Even if it's 40 degrees now, it's not. It's only 25 degrees. Um, and this is the best time to visit um, uh, Misara. It is, uh, it's full with shade. And the view is amazing to the Dead Sea, to Ingeri. And we already know that army camp. That army camp, um, uh, the big one was for the Silva, the commander, and later on after the Romans uh, left, they kept their army camps here for a few months, uh, and, and uh, because they didn't know, uh, didn't need a big one, they um, used a small one as well. Then you can see like two layers, or two two walls, one in the inner wall, one on the outside wall. Another important thing is that they knew exactly where to build the siege wall, and here, um, you can see that the siege wall goes all the way down. It doesn't matter if it's a valley or not. It doesn't matter if it's a cliff or not. And um, they knew exactly where to build it because if you will throw arrows on them or uh, stones or whatever, it won't reach um, the army camps. But I'm here for that. And we know that there's no rain here. I mean, a few moments um, uh, uh, here. Uh, it's helped the uh, family of uh, of uh, King Herod, but it's that was a miracle. Then, in that case, what King Herod knew that if he want to enjoy water, he must use the flesh flood, uh, flesh floods water that happens to here once or two years. And just to show you how it looks like. Wait, sun is in your eyes now. Let me let me go to a shady place. There it is. And a few years ago, um, ten children died because of it. You cannot if you don't have a radio or a TV. You don't know if it actually will happen because here it's usually blue sky, and uh, most of the time it's sunny here, just like today. Uh, we're talking about 85 degrees today, Fahrenheit, 25, even more than that. And this is the end of November. Then in that matter, what he did, he actually built two aqueducts. That's the first one. And there's another one, an upper one. And he used the water that reach, didn't reach the cliff yet, because that will be too strong. For example, here and there. And some of the water, I mean, we need what we need is one flash flood here, that's it, to fill all of those water systems. And if we are talking about the small holes, then I want you to see how small is that hole and how big is that water system. Here it is. That's a small hole, and here it is. You can understand how big it is. Then what left for the water you need to do is to climb up a few times a day to fill the water system on top of on top of my cellar. and you saw it and just to show you how many we are that's the water system of the, the aqueducts and look all the blue blue notes are part of big water systems and even swimming pool here then in that case although there's no water in that model, I brought a little bit of it. Then that's why I'm shaking a little bit. Then, no one knows about the flash flood. It's blue sky, peaceful, and then you hear the of it. Now look what's happening now. Can see it. Absolutely lovely, isn't it? And now we can say he, that he is crazy. But you can say that he's genius as well. Then let me show you the view because I'm not sure that I took that video as well. You can see the three palaces, the upper one, the middle one, and the lower one. Remember 11 stories gap, 11 stories building gap between the upper and the lower. And look downstairs, you can see the holes of the, of the systems. This is the upper aqueduct and this is the lower aqueduct. Now, the Romans couldn't reach it because, like, I you know, um, strike, strike, strike. 
Then they took the, 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 the um, slaves all the way to um, to 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 Engedi to get water. While here, they could enjoy lots of water, and we will go together to the synagogue because that is the part that I forgot. I mean, I didn't forget. I didn't operate the camera. And let's let's go to the synagogue together. We are on the way to the synagogue. Um, when I was here like two hours ago, it was empty. Now there are a few Israeli groups here. Then it's not going to be as quiet as I wanted it to be. Sorry, but uh, that's life. A synagogue is a place to mingle. It's a community house. That's the meaning of synagogue in Hebrew, Bet Knesset. At the time of the temple, people didn't pray there. They used to, um, it was like a news channel, what's new in the world, um, what's new in the Torah, new rules. Um, they studied the Torah, but they didn't pray. They prayed in a, they prayed in a, Jerusalem and the Jewish temple three times here. Let's sit right here and let's hope that it will be it won't be so noisy. Oh wait a minute. Then if they study the Torah here, for example, the best way is to sit around. Then everyone can see everyone and they can talk with each other and they can argue. And in Judaism, the, uh, at the time of the Second Temple, there were so many kind of Judaism. Pharisees, Tzedekis, Isis, um, uh, Sikaris, uh, and even Christianity. That at that time was another, another kind of Judaism. I mean, St. Peter, he didn't know that he is a Christian, if you ask me. Then argument is still... The idea when Jews are studying today in yeshivas in the biblical school, they are arguing. One is trying to convince the other that his way is better. Then, if you are talking about Jesus and the Jews, Sanhedrin, Pharisees, etc., that is the way until today. It's not about hate. It's about trying to figure out different ways. Then. Um, here you can see the meeting hall, but what is that room? Before we will talk about what is that room, let's talk about uh, that place. That place at the time of King Herod was a stable. Remember the water? The unit of the water had used to go all the way down and up, down and up, almost 24 hours a day, even at the days that, that King Herod wasn't here, to fill the water system. Then the donkeys were here. Um, when the Jews came to here, they built here a temple, a uh, synagogue, sorry. Uh, that was at the time of the temple, and the temple is that way. And we are facing now Jerusalem. Um, I'm not sure that they actually pray there, uh, pray here, although I must tell you they, they were, didn't visit, uh, they didn't leave that place, or it was difficult for them to leave. Maybe they did. But after the destruction of the temple, they started to pray here. Like today, um, everyone, when you talked about synagogues, you were talking about the three prayers of a day. That is the most important thing, but not uh, before the temple has been destroyed. In that room, we found a gniza, gni with G. What is a gniza? When a Bible been damaged, it's happened. Uh, they cannot throw it to the garbage. They cannot burn it down. They must bury it. It's holy. Then that room was used for that. And we found here one of the uh, scrolls of uh, Hezekiah um, and the, the dry bones. Uh, another important thing to understand is that here we believe that Ben Yahir, the manager of, uh, of the Jews here, when he decided to kill everyone, he, uh, all the men get out here. And that was the meeting place, remember? A synagogue, a community place. Now, about the notes for the Western Wall. The minute you will put the notes between the Western Wall stones, it will be holy. It will be holy, and they will, um, they will uh, bury it later on at the Gniza, 
which is a burial tomb for holy scripts at Mount of Olives. Then now you do have a reason to uh, write a note next time when you'll be at the Western Wall. Then, my dears, um, let's continue the tour. And let's leave the synagogue. We actually know that the synagogue was one of the most important places in Judaism and, uh, and, and one of the most important pl uh, places for the Jews who've been here um, uh, from 66, just before the destruction of the temple until the end. This is such an important room. Let's enter to it. And you will see, first of all, um, how a wall used to be look like. Lots of flights now. Uh, looking at the water, my bottle of water, and asking for, for a little bit of it. Here, we cover it with um, um, wooden roof. You must understand that in about 100 meters, you will see where the um, uh, Romans enter to the wall, to the, to the fortress, and it's quite close to the main, uh, main army camp. And after the destruction of uh, Mesada, they are uh, still been here on top in those rooms, this, I'm talking about the Roman soldiers, and they had to talk, with, uh, they could talk from uh, here to the main, uh, main, um, main army camp. I don't want to shout because it's not nice, but believe me, you can hear me a bit, uh, until Tel Aviv from here. Then they shoot that place a lot when they uh, started to enter Mesara, we didn't talk about it, we will talk about it when we'll be there. Um, then the roof was burned down and fell to the ground. And when we excavate, we found lots of um, pieces of Torah. Some of them were turned down into pieces by the Romans. We found lots of coins that the Romans didn't find, coins uh, from uh, the Jewish time. Um, we found here comb, uh, clothes, um, that was uh, held by the Jews. We found here a paycheck uh, of uh, one of the Roman soldiers. We know that he bought um, uh, Caligula um, um, boots. And uh, they took it off of that payment. And, uh, and it's one of the first that we found. We found a part of uh, um, comedy or tragedy. Uh, books from of the Romans. Then we found here evidence for the life before the siege and the life after the siege. Lots of memories here. Lots of memories. Remember, everything was green here. And new excavations, all right, new excavations are here, and that connected, connected us to the uh, last story of Masada, and we will talk about it when we will uh, deal with the siege. But it was the agriculture area at the time of the Romans, and at the time of the Jews. Then we are talking about food, fresh food. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, dry food as well. Dry fish, salty fish, dry dates. But this is part of the um, agriculture, columbarium, the of cot. But that one is not so beautiful like the other one. Then we will go to the other one. And the group of Israeli children at the um, 
place that I want to stop, then let's let's let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And I'm looking for small bushes. Here it is. Or small plants. Here they are. Oh. And there are more here. And here as well. Here it is. Here you can see the Columbarium Tower. And uh, let's enter, it looks like that. And let's enter it. Pigeons. Gee, I mean, they're all the family. When, oh, look at the bird. I don't know if I'll be able to take a picture of it. Look how beautiful it is. It's look like a model. Beautiful, isn't it? Ah, we talked about a uh, dove cut. Here it is, columbarium. Birds are here. For a moment I thought that it's a statue, but it's not. Then, here it is. What we are using pigeons for, sacrificial at the temple, the other family did it as well. Um, post, and um, food, stuffed pigeon. And with the number two of them, that we are fertilizing the fields here. Then here it is. In front of you. Now, because we cannot enter now to the place that I wanted you to see, there's a group of Israelis now um, there. Let's talk about what's happened after that. Now, um, the Romans were here for a few months uh, to check that the Jews are not going back. We are talking about 73, 74. We don't know exactly the here of uh, the attack, and the attack took us took them only three months. But later on, monks in the fifth century came to here. They uh, turned it into a monastery uh, in the desert, not so far away from Jerusalem. A beautiful place to uh, meditate, to be, to connect you to God. Then we found here a monastery. To been here from the fifth century until the Muslims came to here. We know that the Muslims didn't destroy that place, but I think that they didn't feel safe that they actually went to the main uh, uh, monastery. And remember when we uh, started the tour, we saw uh, the palace that I told you that it might be on base of the Hashbunia Tower. We were going to visit it uh, soon. And um, up there, up there, it's like up there, up there, it's a swimming pool for visitors. When the visitors came through there, through there, you can see the other uh, exit. When they enter, they took here, took them to enjoy the water because it's cold, it's hot here to refreshment to get away the wine and uh, and then they started to deal with them today uh oh I forgot to mention the Gnesa room remember the when we found uh, some of the bible this is from the bible um nowadays there is a rabbi who write a torah scroll and you know the torah scroll is uh, written by hand then he writes it and they use it for the new synagogue that they built here and they having a lot of uh, weddings and uh, and bar mitzvah ceremonies which can be a very good uh, very good idea here they are they are living and we can go in the group is slow slowly leaving the site and we still have water And let them go and let us water it. And let's go to to here. Let me show where it is. 
that's where the Romans entered into the city. Remember, it wasn't so far from um, from the rooms that we saw. We entered to it. That, oops, sorry about that noise. You can see the Tactin Tower that they built and the ramp uh, that they built. They mainly did it on night time because the Jews used a lot of stones and look at that to stop them from doing it, but the Romans know what to do. They know their, uh, their work. And this is the only place without a wall here. Then let's enter now. Now we're talking about 74, 73 AD, and guess what? We can see the siege one in front of you. And even two people that climbing up, remember I told you that there are three ways to enter to Masada, snake path uh, from here, and uh, which is not so difficult, I must say, 10 minutes walking up. And that's the reason the Romans decided to build the siege wall here. Siege wall is made of a lot of wood, a lot of sand, and uh, most of the people who did it were the servants. I'm talking about the Jewish servants. Um, at the beginning here, the people asked themselves, should we kill them or not? Because they are already servants. They are not free men, and we want to be free. Uh, at the beginning, they didn't. But later on, when they realized that it's the, the Romans are very serious, um, they started to do that. Then the Romans switched themselves into night work. Uh, artillery of the Romans actually hit the rooms that we've been here and, and that area as well. Then from here they enter, but when they enter, what they heard is silence. Silence. Around 1,000 Jews were already dead. Two women and three children hide themselves in one of the water systems here, but of course the Romans found them. I'm sure that they actually um, uh, told the Romans what's happened. I'm not sure that what happened to them. Um, Joseph uh, Plavius, Joseph Ben Matitiao, didn't mention it, and I'm not sure that I know the answer, because this is one of the questions that everyone asks me. Then, the excavation here, what they found, but they didn't publish it yet, what they told me is that they found some of the uh, uh, water system and the sleeping rooms of the monks that have been here. We're talking about a few monks. Now, a synagogue is facing to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is there. And the synagogue that you saw was there as well. A church is facing to the east, and east is there. Yeah, you got it. Then this is a Byzantine uh, church, and let's finish the water that I found and let's water it looks like a little bit thirsty enjoy no, there's a little bit more then we'll find another bush bush if you can call it a bush then here it is nautix you see there maybe to clean the feet or to close the doors facing to the east but what we found here, we didn't find in the, uh, at the time of, of King Herod, though he knew how to do that, different kind of mosaic floor, this time with figures or plants. Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, now he is green. Did someone else forget uh, his bottle of water? 
Then I'll give him a little bit and we will look for some bush that's surviving, trying to find a water source. And if it's okay by you, let's go together to the Western Palace. Now, why there's a stone on top of there? Probably. Uh, because if it will be open, the bird will come to feed themselves there. They just renovated it. Then I might find things that I don't know. Just like the entrance there. There's a nice entrance. Uh, looks like marble, but it's not. It's only fresco or stucco. Not everyone could enter to the palace, only only some people who were invited, but not the most important one, because the most important one will be, you know where, the other place. Here, we usually have a lot of ceremonies, children ceremonies, bar mitzvahs, you can see the chairs are there, and there's even, looks like a Hanukkah. Yes, this is Hanukkah. For Hanukkah, they're going to light candles every every day here. It's already ready, and Hanukkah starts, I think, tomorrow. Oh, day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tricky, tricky, tricky. We have to go, yeah, because that's the exit. We have to go back to the entrance of the room. Did you subscribe my channel? Are you going to do that? You are going to do that, mainly because I'm asking you. I do have kind of a competition between me and my daughter. Her name is Lior, L-I-O-R, uh, my light in Hebrew. And uh, she doesn't accept the idea that I'm a YouTuber. I mean, 19,000 videos are not enough for her. Uh, and she said, when you will have 100,000 uh, subscribers, talk to me. I do have 97, at least for today, 97 to 100. Please subscribe my channel. Please send it to all of your friends. I want to reach uh, 100,000 before January 14. That's her birthday. And I want her to buy me a present. Amazing, isn't it? For me, it's amazing because there's no, not a lot of tourists here. Usually, there's a big line. Look how beautiful the Western Palace looks like. And we are in the center, right here now. See the two columns there? Here it is. And that's where we live. Uh, King Harold was sitting. And, you know, he was dealing, uh, not dealing, uh, killing, not killing. No, killing King Harold in a daily life. Let's climb up. Some believes that he slept in that place. I don't. It's like, um, it's not it's too big for him. Uh, it's a secondary temple. And a secondary temple is not important. There are more rooms here. You know, if they, uh, if King Herod was here, then a lot of the clocks were with him. An oven. Remember, the Jews use it as well. But let's climb up. I heard a little bit of noise. It means that there are a few. Uh, there, there is at least one family there. I thought that they are walking down. They are. Now let's let's wait. Yes. All right. Now we can climb up. It was at least two stories building. Yeah. 
And if you're talking about beautiful mosaics here, you can find it. But again, without any figures. That was his bath. You can see the floor of the bath. Later on, the Jews use it for a mikveh. And look how beautiful is the mosaic floor here. Amazing, isn't it? Um, I'm saving my water. And I'm not supposed to do that, but it's actually dusty. And if you put a little bit of water on the mosaic floor, you will be able to see how beautiful they are. Colorful and small stones. It actually shows you that it was um, beautiful. A little bit of here left. Not a lot, but you can imagine how beautiful it is. It's, it was like a carpet. And you can understand that the uh, walls were colored as well. It wasn't just like that. Green and beautiful colors all over, all over. And um, look how beautiful it is. We started a tour from there. Uh, you can see where the flag is. That's the entrance of the snake path. And then we climb up to the commander residence, to the uh, entrance of the temple. We saw the storerooms. We saw uh, uh, the three palaces, the northern palaces of his. Um, we went to the synagogue. We found, now you know everything about the water issue with him. Oh, look at the other pool. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, isn't it? From time to time when there are tourists, the line for the cable car starts from here. All the way to there, it's like an hour. Wow, look at the top of the Moab Mountains. You can see there, I don't know if you can see it, because it's the sun is in my eyes. But suddenly you can see how high are the mountains there. And the northern part of the Dead Sea begins there as well. I hope that you can actually see it. If not, I do have other movies about it, but not as beautiful as that because you're watching it. And because I'm using the gimbal. Are we talking about another mikveh? Of course. It looks like that this is the Otsar. When it rains here, I mean, remember the mikveh is supposed to come from the rainwater, then enter to here and there's exit, goes all the way to the water that we already have got. Remember the aqueduct? Then here it is. Now there are so many things to see here, but uh, even for me it's a little bit hot now. Um, we will skip the Olympic swimming pool. I'm not kidding. And um, see, even here they are closing it. There's a little bit of water. Oh, I can see. I can see a hidden bush. That too. What I'm gonna do? No, those are big ones, and this is not. Then he needs water more than others. That's water. Oh yes, here it is. Enjoy, my dear. Uh, it's gonna be heat wave soon. Heat wave. We are in winter time. Um, if it's now 25 degrees, it's gonna be 32, 33 degrees in about two days from now. This is another reason I decided to. Sadly, there's no recycle place here, although they promised to build it. Then, a small pool, but remember, we believe that when they came, his visitors came to here, the first thing that he did is a refreshment, because the climbing up to here was the last, was the last uh, part of their 
uh, agony. They had to walk like a few days to reach that place. And then they could enjoy a nice pool, but a small one. Remember, we do have an Olympic pools. Uh, but this is only for visitors. So let's say two or three people came to visit him a week. They don't need a huge pool. That is the locker rooms. Great, isn't it? And some rooms. Let's say one of them, as I believe, might give them a little bit of food and wine. They have to change their clothes. I'm climbing up to here because uh, I want you to see how beautiful it is the is Jordan Mountains, but I myself cannot see it. If you can see it, please write me something. Tell me that. And you can see the northern part of the Dead Sea. I'm sure that you can see it because it's a big blue. Don't miss the Dead Sea. This is one of the for me, all these places, first of all, the main source of the Dead Sea is the Jordan River, which is holy. And, um, and then, um, what else? Da, 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 da. Yeah, and then it's so salty and so good to your skin that it can cure almost any skin disease. And, uh, it's so fun to float because that's the only way floating and and the real reason come as quick as you can and uh, mainly because we are losing it remember we are losing one and a half meter every year a lot then we will say goodbye now it's already 100 one hour 40 minutes um, see you in my next video my next video will be about a beautiful place that's called uh, uh, da David uh, Spring, David uh, River, uh, River, small one, uh, beautiful, and it's, it's a national reserve full with water. Um, remember, it's, it's in the En Gedi. Uh, we talked about En Gedi. Then uh, follow me, please. Send that video to everyone. Send my videos to everyone. Ask them to subscribe my channel. I need at least 100,000 subscribers until January 14. And then my daughter will be 17. And she will have to beg me to say, yes, father, you are right. You are a YouTuber. Then see you. Bye-bye.